Why Elon Musk Should Rather Planetize the Moon Instead of Mars Hello and welcome back to Tech Lux Insider. We're back with another interesting video as usual on our channel. As you all know, our channel brings new, fresh, and attentive content. Before we start, I would like you to hit that red subscribe button so that you never miss out on any of our videos. Elon Musk envisions sending humans to live on Mars in the not-so-distant future itself. NASA also echoes the same and wants to send a few space explorers over to the red planet to check. However, the moon is far easier and more affordable for people to get to. Things being what they are here is an ideal chance to resuscitate a significant discussion which is, if in the worst scenario, if humans would have to retreat from planet Earth, would it be on Mars or the moon? For what reason would we say we aren't going to colonize the moon first? Why is Elon Musk so fixated on Mars? The space race among Russia and the US is over, yet that doesn't mean interest in the moon has evaporated. Presently, alongside government agencies, multi-billion dollar organizations like Elon Musk's powered SpaceX and Jeff Bezos' own Blue Origin are both focusing on landing on the moon. But Musk advocates colonizing Mars as his topmost priorities, be that as it may, it is to be thought as in what terms can the moon be a more feasible choice for a permanent place to stay for us humans than Mars. First of all, the moon is nearer to Earth than Mars is. This saves an enormous measure of fuel and cash. We have rockets right now that can land a ton of stuff on the moon. We could begin unloading supplies on the moon in months in case we truly needed to. Notwithstanding the fact that we do have rockets that can land small amount of stuff on Mars, however, it's truly difficult to get enormous items to Mars. To get to Mars, you need to move totally away from Earth, move out to Mars and afterward land delicately on the red surface. This course of going to Mars takes a ton of energy and requires a colossal rocket to settle the matter of getting a modest quantity of stuff on a superficial level on the red planet. Moreover, if we need the space travelers to return home, you need to construct a rocket that can go to Mars and come back. As a matter of fact, those don't exist yet. On the travel and communication part, it just requires three days to get to the moon, while it requires a half a year to get to Mars. Furthermore, since a Martian year is significantly longer than an Earth year, the planets align in the correct way for movement once at regular intervals. There is around a 14-day term in which you can dispatch a rocket to get from the Earth to Mars, which is known as a dispatch window, and in the event that you miss that, you are out of luck until the following time they adjust in the correct manner after two years. The moon, however, is not difficult to get to since it is a lot nearer. Indeed, since the moon is circling the Earth, we can go there basically at whatever point we need. This has huge security implications in case we need to. Rescuing the individuals from the moon would just require a couple of days, while on Mars, individuals could remain abandoned for a really long time. Settlements on the moon have their monetary advantages too when contrasted with Mars. Similarly, as it's simpler to send supplies to the moon than it is to send them on to Mars, delivering stuff from the moon down to Earth is incredibly modest and cheaper. That implies in the event that if we dig the moon for substances like metals or helium-3, which is required for atomic combination, we could return stuff back to the Earth for basically no expense. The Mars dwellers will also encounter a lot of solar flares. Space explorers would be out on a small boat in the vastness of the space. In case there were an enormous solar flare that made radiation increment essentially, which happens a great deal, then at that point they would bite the dust, except if the boat had incredibly uncompromising radiation shielding. A sun flare could occur and route to the moon as well. In any case, since it requires just three days to arrive, it is simpler to keep away from times in which there might be radiation eruptions. In the long haul, Mars wins as far as choosing a planet for making mankind a multiplanetary species is concerned. The moon is too brutal to even think about being anything except a stepping stone toward life in space. Due to the opportunities of life and the exceptionally intriguing topography that occurred we have come to know about in the past, Mars gives a vastly improved chance to scientific logical exploration. That said, the moon is a significantly more financially plausible area for a settlement. A Mars state will keep on being far away in the future until it's subsidized due to a shift in the political landscape. Both Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos plan to visit the moon before NASA's Artemis mission intends to land in 2024, getting where the 12 moonwalkers of the Apollo missions left off. Nonetheless, the primary objective isn't the moon, but Mars. 
Musk says he wants to be in space in light of the fact that there's nothing more invigorating than being out there among the stars, while Bezos' desires are powered by conviction that we will run out of energy on Earth. Musk distributed a goal-oriented self-composed report last year illustrating his vision of Mars colonization. The report recognizes the significance of visiting the moon first as a kind of visiting point, a decision Bezos and NASA have likewise considered logical. Both Bezos and Musk have sworn to aid NASA as of late declared 2024 mission to the moon, Artemis. The mission recently planned to send the people to the moon by 2028 was rushed to 2024 in spring by an order issued by the Trump Organization. That means the moon is still in contention for becoming one of our possible future homes. However, it remains to be seen whether companies like SpaceX go forward with the idea rather than just focusing on colonizing Mars. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you on the next video.